So we've talked about the Lee and Lee Uni fans here, which have highly become like an extremely popular fan that was really hard to get a hold of for a long time because of their snap together ability and daisy chaining with a single wire for RGB and a single wire for the fans made them extremely popular. But they were a solid blade with only lighting on the edge right here, which was nice. So Lee and Lee came out with a fan that has an illuminated hub, an illuminated blade, but with no lighting on the side. So we have the AL120 and the SL120. And Phil jokingly said, you know they're gonna come out with a fan where they're gonna put both together, right? That's where the Unifan SL Infinity 120 comes in. The Corsair HS65 gaming headset features Dolby 7.1 surround, Sonarworks Sound ID for customized audio tastes, on-ear volume controls for easy adjustment, and leatherette memory foam ear cups for fatigue-free long-term gaming sessions. To see the full feature list of the Corsair HS65 gaming headset, follow the link in the description below. I'm not gonna lie, I am debating draining my personal rig again and changing out the fans to these. So I'm currently running these guys right here, the AL120s that have this kind of a chrome, like brushed black with like a chamfered, camfered, whatever you call it, chamfered edge, it's all machined and polished and looks nice. But the, uh, I like the side glow that I currently have in black ice, but I also miss having the extra light that comes off of an illuminated hub. So when Lee and Lee told me a while back they were coming out with these new fans, which by the way, very much so require their own controller. Look at the difference in plug right here. This is a very different plug. They were actually using the um, JST, that's a JST plug, which is like the industry standard plug. This is not that because there are so many lights in the new fan, it's not even funny. So for instance, if we take it out and take a look at it here, we have got side lighting and hub lighting with infinity rings. So. What is the point of putting that on there when it doesn't even take off the, the plastic that's supposed to be, pro it's protecting. Oh, look at that, the junction point two is also in a very different spot. See on these fans, they're like up there. Same thing with these, All right? They're up higher. But what we've got here is illuminated hub, an infinity ring built into the hub, plus infinity mirrors on the sides of the fans. So there is a lot of LEDs in this. See there, if you take it off, it's very reflective and very shiny. It's basically a mirror. I'm curious now as to how the lighting effects are gonna look. This is something that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be 100% real with you. This is absolutely positively not necessary at all. These are nice to haves. These are not need to haves. And they go along with the entire video I did regarding things that you should not waste your money on. These fans have got to be in excess of 30 bucks a piece. Now you can get a three pack like this, but individual fans, you're gonna, you'll need more if you wanna put an entire case together. Fortunately, the controller can run four fans per channel and there's four channels. So that means you can run 12 fans off of a single controller. But as you add more stuff like this, it's only gonna get more and more expensive. But in terms of the fans like you know, external properties. It's got rubber standoffs off both sides of the, the cage right there. Um, and then it's got this nice, which also has an illuminated ring around it as well. It's RGB machined Lee and logo or Lee and Lee logo on the center. And then we have trim lighting here as well. Very similar to how these fans were because it's kind of hard to tell because this is a white one, but this is the RGB strip right there. This doesn't light up anywhere in the center on the front or the back. It just lights up on these two sides. But this one kind of has that same sort of strip on both sides of the fan as well. So there's just literally lights everywhere. Um, in terms of the specs though, they should be identical to all the other ones. So yeah, zero to 2100 RPM, 61.3 CFM, 2.66 millimeters HTO, uh, or millimeters H2O of, uh, that's the amount of force it can overcome in terms of pushing through uh, piping or any sort of pressure resistance. 29 dBA and they are pretty much exactly the same spec as the rest of these fans in terms of the motor and hub. So let's get a few of these out, let's get them plugged in, let's get the new Lee & Lee software loaded up on my test bench and let's see what the lights look on, like on these. It, whether or not they're enough to convince me to tear down my personal rigs loop again 
just to change out the fans. Okay, so the reason why the plugs are in the middle is because of the fact that you can switch the cable off to the other side. So you slide that forward to release it. You can lift it up, it just pops out. You can flip the cable over the other way and then just reverse this. And there we go. So now you can actually choose which side it comes out on, left or right, which Trust me when I say that the old ones being like forcing you to come out a certain direction really sucks when it is facing like this way because you're running exhaust or intake. And that obviously depends on the orientation of the fans that they're exhaust or intake. So I do like seeing that. Another thing that they've changed here is this is the AL, which is the most recent one. These would stick out the side, like the end of, the, because if you weren't connecting to the fan, this is just how it terminated here. Um, these pieces here that stick out aren't really a problem unless you're building in a really tight case where maybe you need every millimeter or this is going on a radiator and then you have fittings here that are in the way. Well, these are fixed and they don't come off. However, on the new Infinity fans, you can see these rotate and just pop out. So you'd be able to take those off and they're no longer in the way. Um, but it's just so many little things like this. This is nice because this is proof when a company is paying attention to what people are saying about their being like, hey, it'd be nice to have this. These are definitely a nice to have because in terms of interfering with radiator fittings and such, that's more of a niche crowd these days. But those coming off is would be nice on mine because they do literally, well, I they do literally go right against where the fittings are on mine. I could show you, I'm not gonna bring the rig over here. But we also have these JST headers for sync three or sync two and sync four, which means, and I'm gonna test this right now, you could plug a JST type of RGB strip, additional fan, block, whatever, into here, and it will sync with whatever channel four or channel two is doing. So that's kind of nice to see, and I wanna test that. But let's go ahead and plug this in right now into channel, I'm gonna go channel four because I wanna test the sync. Look at all that lighting, that's what I was saying. Dude, all the airflow, man. And they're running at their slowest speed right now, too. So like I said, we've got a hub ring. We've got this edge ring. We've got the infinity mirror on the side, which we'll rely on B-roll to show you that. And we have the infinity mirror in the hub, which just adds so much depth. This is literally, remember how I did a video about the fans that had no RGB and I said, this is for those of you that hate RGB. This is for those of you that are like, Disco nightclub the shit out of my rig. So this is the three pin JST plug right here. This is how the other uh, uni fans were. I'm just gonna plug this in now to sync four and it should, yeah, look at that. So technically there's six devices that could plug into this. or more, <laughs> so. Well, that's nice to see. You know what makes this nice is they know that they run JST on their older boxes. So I guess if you wanted to run a mix of their fan series, you could absolutely do that. It's gonna more or less run a generic type of pattern where you're not gonna get the hub control and all that, but it's probably gonna match whatever the overall, whatever. Let's finish installing the software real quick. Uh, there's already a firmware update. So Lee and Lee, I'll connect now does a lot more than just control your fan speeds and your RGB. Um, it gives you kind of a readout of your system. So you can see system temperature, you can see your clock speeds, your GPU temp, GPU clock rate, or just clock frequency. How much storage you have available. And as you can see, our, our drives are fairly full. Network uh, throughput, RAM's utilization and availability, fan pump RPM. So look at this, you get a much more, this did not exist in the earlier builds of Lee and Lee's L Connect. And I love this because you can set now, do they use GPU or CPU? I would like for them to maybe allow you to choose the hottest of the two, like fan control software does. Let's go full speed on these. They, they are such a slow ramp. So if you wanna hear how long it takes for them to ramp, check this out, which is nice because it's not quite as intrusive. Okay, so they slow down faster than they speed up. So if we go now to full speed. See, it takes them like a solid 10 seconds or so. But I, I love the fact that now 
we can individually control different channels to different devices. What is that, what is that useful for? If you know that channel one is on um, case fans and channel two is on say a radiator, you could have them run at different speeds or different temperature probes to say what's, what's gonna speed us up and have different fan uh, speeds based on those devices. So we could have our radiator fans be set to GPU if we wanted because the GPU is definitely going to heat up the loop faster and dump more heat into the loop than a CPU will. And you see how all these are, are like syncing together, right? So I'm putting this one on top here just to show you. That's set up to the JST header. That's what it means when it says no fan because of the fact, see, there's nowhere to plug the fan in. So we would have to use a splitter somewhere for the fan control, um, have this plugged into the motherboard or something else because the proprietary header for the new fan has everything in one plug. Whereas it was split on the older ones, as you can see right here. So they did consolidate everything into one plug, which makes it even neater and tidier when it comes to running things. The other thing that makes this complicated for me personally is the fact that if I wanted to run these fans now, I have to use this box. Where with the current setup, I just have a JST adapter that goes into a, the standard header that would go into your motherboard like this, running into the input uh, of the power board that I have in my setup, which means this would complicate things for me. So I won't be using these fans simply because of the fact that they changed it to that single plug, which is fine. I'm, I'll find other builds to utilize this in. One of the reasons why I set the other fan on top too is I was just kind of curious as to what the color balance looks like between the two. These are always gonna look lighter than these because of the fact that this is much more heavily diffused. But I just like seeing the JST header on there because if you can have more devices hooked into a single point, then you don't have as much clutter going around everywhere. I do like that it's still sort of syncing the color because look, if we had a third fan here, it should be green because blue, blue, red, red, green, green should be there. And then the infinity lighting, um, this needs an update for the infinity lighting, but the infinity lighting will have a whole different set of like available availability options to it because you have the hub control will be separate from the side control, separate from the edge lighting. Right here on this little drop down, this is where you can change the different parts of the fan. So there's the edge lighting, there's the infinity, and then there's like everything together. See now our infinity mirror and edge is still on rainbow, but now we have this, whatever they call door happening on just on the blades. So the infinity mirror is gonna do whatever the hub is doing, which makes sense. Now, if we just do the edge, we can set the edge to, you know, let's just see static color. Nice. So you have a lot of control over this. What is, oh, disco, that should be pretty self-explanatory. Oh my. <laughs> that, that's actually kind of cool. And I hit apply to all, so I did it to channel four also. But I'm surprised to see that this fan is trying it. It's like, I can do it, I can do it. It's all blah, 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 but it's it's doing it. Look at that. Dude, these look so good. I, I am sort of relieved though, like I said, that I cannot put these in my current system because of that control box. Because that's what it would look like on the side. That would be so cool. Not the, of the monitor, obviously. I'm just imagining what they look like on the side of a case. Dude, I have to do a build with these now. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Warning, warning, whoop, whoop. That's what, you, that's what you should be able to make it do if your temps go over a certain set point. Like make it so it can be like, oh God, everything's too hot. So there's one other thing I wanna check here on this. I kinda wanna see how resistant these are to scratching because I these are plastic and if they were glass, they'd be a lot more expensive. But I'm curious, see, I, I've touched it. Ah, it's my finger, ah. Let me, um, let me unplug. <laughs> It's not a fan video of Jason sticking his fingers in the blades. So I need to do a scratch resistant test. I mean, you're, it's going to happen. When you're installing them and stuff, you're going to get your fingers on them because they're on both sides and you, you grab it like that or whatever. And so now we're just going to see if we just sort of lightly wipe it with a microfiber, will they scratch? So far, it actually seems to be pretty resistant. Oh, I think we have some scratches on this one. So, I mean, as you can see from this angle right here, there's definitely some scratches in there. It is just soft, transparent plastic. So that's something to keep in mind. If it, I would recommend getting a light brush or something to try and lightly brush away any of the dust or a little shop vac or something before you just resort to wiping it. Because <clears throat> any debris that's on it 
if you just take a towel and start wiping it, just like paint on a car, you're gonna scratch it. So I intentionally scratched that one just to see how much it could resist. Um, I didn't have to push it very hard. And there also wasn't any dust or anything on there, just my fingerprints. That's kind of a downside of things that are highly reflective and highly see-through like this, is you could find yourself um, scratching it a lot over time. It's kind of like if you have a, an old case with an acrylic side panel or an, a plexiglass side panel, you know, you wipe it down a few times, you start seeing those scratches, they're gonna appear on these. But when you look at it straight on, like I can't see them at all. When they're in a case, like way over there, they're not gonna really show the scratches, but again, that's just the first ones. How, what's it gonna look like over time? So that was my fear about the infinity mirror on these. Um, it's a legitimate fear to have. Also too, in terms of wobble, you can see all three of the fans, the mirrors aren't perfectly centered. They have a little bit of wobble. So that's only gonna be even more obvious now that they're a mirror. But just like before, these things move an absolute crap ton of air. So if that doesn't give me an idea of how much air these things move. And they're very quiet, which is why I've always used them in my systems once they become available. They're expensive though. I mean, this is a, this is a premium fan. You are probably three quarters of the cost of these fans is just the lighting system, the control box, the lights, the, you know, the, all the R and D they put into this and the manufacturing. This is not a cheap fan to manufacture. So this is not a fan for the faint of heart when it comes to prices. Anyway, I'll put a link to the uh, prices down below. They're constantly changing. Like I said, this one's gonna be at least $30 a fan, which is pretty typical for the SL or the Uni series fans. They are among the best though. It's hard to look at these fans in any rig, any generation of the Uni fan, whether it be the original, the AL, which is in my system, or the new ones, it, they just look good. They really do. And, and Tidiness, look, it's three fans with one cable coming off of it. You, know, you can hide all this other crap behind your motherboard tray, but one cable, which is flat too, which makes it easy to route behind anything, is what keeps it all super tidy and that's what makes it even have like any sort of enticement or incentive to install them is the fact that it's the daisy chain ability. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you've been running Lee and Lee fans since they've come out, whether it be the first gen or the second gen, what's your experience been like? Have they held up? Have they become rattly and noisy? Has the RGB died in them? Has the controller died? So far ours that I, I've been using at my personal rig for the last two years has not had any problems whatsoever uh, or any sort of lighting dropout. Heck, the mode doesn't even change. You know, sometimes you go to your RGB, you turn on your system, like why is it rainbow puking suddenly out of nowhere? That's never happened to me. Uh, sometimes when the software updates itself, it might revert its lighting mode. I just go back and change it to a profile that I saved, uh, but it hasn't been a problem. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.